Okay, let's talk about the conditions for resonance then in this circuit. We can actually come up with a formula, an equation for this. Now, the first thing to do is to mention Ohm's law. You already know Ohm's law. For DC, it's that voltage is proportional to current Current's proportional to voltage, V equals IR. For AC, there's a very similar version of Ohm's law. It's that V, RMS, average over a cycle, is equal to I, the RMS average over a cycle, times a thing that tells how they're proportional and is bigger when there's more pushback, more, well, resistance in the DC case, but we don't call it resistance, we call it impedance, and we use the letter Z. Z is impedance. And a thing about impedance to know is it can depend upon the frequency. So it's not a constant, the way R is a constant in the resistance, although R can be a part of impedance. So impedance can depend on frequency. Now I'm not going to derive it, but when you go through and study how AC works, uh, the expression for Z, the impedance in a circuit, is yes, if there's resistance, you square it, and then there's what are called reactances, the, the inductive reactance and the capacitive reactance squared, and we're adding them in quadrature. That's what impedance is. What are the reactants? Reactants. The inductive reactance of X sub L is omega L, and the capacitive reactance, here, let me make those look like nice capitals, 1 over omega C, and omega is 2 pi times the frequency. It's called the angular frequency. And remember, F is 1 over the period and cycles per second instead of seconds per cycle. So omega is also 2 pi over the period. You've seen it's the same definition as in circular motion in physics 1. Okay, so now resonance. The condition for resonance is that the impedance be the smallest possible. Now it can't get any smaller than the resistance, but when these two cancel, because that's a minus sign, when these two cancel, this part goes away, leaving only the resistance, the resistive part, which doesn't depend on the frequency. So resonance occurs when impedance is minimized. And that occurs when the reactances are equal and cancel each other out. Well, we can set these two things equal to each other. Omega L equals 1 over omega C, and I'm going to solve for the frequency, so that's angular omega 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 squared equals 1 over, uh, not 2 pi, 1 over oh, LC. 2, two pi is coming. My brain was getting there. Okay, I'm going to take the square root of this, and so I'll get omega, and I will also, um, two, so that, and then I'll take the square root of both sides. So 2 pi f equals 1 over square root of LC. If you were writing this as a derivation, you'd be say, writing what I'm saying, and we'll solve for f is 1 over 2 pi square root of LC. So you can compute what the expected resonant frequency is from this. You need to know for our uh, circuit, L will take to be 4.5 millihenries, that's the unit of inductance in millis 10 to minus 3, and C, the capacitor we're going to use, it, it may be different depending on which capacitor we use, but at least the labeling on it says that it is one 
microfarad. 10 to the minus 3, 10 to the minus 6, these need to be in Henry's and, and farads to get a frequency in hertz. So before you move on and do the experiment, put in these values and calculate the expected frequency because that's going to determine the range of frequency in which we do the experiment. And I don't want any surprises and it'll help you know which scale we're on when we're collecting the data. Okay.